didn't want to do that anyway. I'd rather be a surveyor. I'd rather go out in the woods while they were still there. <laughs> Uh, plot the mines and whatever it was that a surveyor does, which seemed fascinating to me at the time. Mathematical geometry and all that magic stuff that I I had an interest in. Uh, but that di didn't happen. Good intentions, but I ended up back in the woods and, and then it was even worse, and there came a time when I, I just, I just couldn't do it, and I just couldn't feel good about myself doing that anymore. So I, I stopped and wondered what I was going to do with responsibilities, and decided that I would uh, build woodsheds out of logs that I could pick up and carry, and, and that. There wasn't quite the market that I thought there might be, but the puzzle was in front of me, and I I was fascinated by it. How do, how do you join these, how do you do this? How do you join logs together? And I ended up going to a, a log building school up in British Columbia, which was a changing point for me because I not only could relate to what was being taught, but I was introduced to a foreign country, and Canada is, oh my gosh, the people up there, they, they could speak two or three languages, and they were you know, butchers and bakers and candlestick makers, and they were just genuine old world people that specialized in whatever they did. And the people at the school came from all over the world. There was there was everybody from from everywhere there. And they all shared in this interest of log of logs. So it was like a family. It was like a it, it was just wonderful to be a participant in that and experience that and receive the, the uh, inspiration, I guess, to explore my own mind. To, to, I can do this now, so now what am I going to do with it? And, and at that point, when I came back to the States, I got involved with the Forest Service and, and their CCC buildings here and there, and it was, so to speak, you know, that's how, that's how I got here, uh, being uh, further indoctrinated into the uh, discipline of historic preservation, which I learned was an actual field of study. And my uh, ability or passion to marry log work with a new thing to think about was uh, a good a good marriage. So the standards, the historic historic preservation is developed by the Secretary of the Interior, which governs the National Park Service. And so their buildings are all governed by the standards. And their most important, very first thing to consider is preservation, which means to identify, retain, and protect and maintain. So those are not intrusive, they're, they're just study and they're the beginning, the basis of whatever comes next. And, and then there's a hierarchy of interventions and treatment strategies and so forth. What I've learned is that everything really is a relationship within a context. So when we talk
talk about restoration, which has a definition which is specific, or rehabilitation, which also has a definition which is also specific, that when we can share the vocabulary and language, then we can actually arrive at a shared opinion of what should be done under the conditions and circumstances that the structure finds itself in. Most of the time that's kind of fun because the people who are engaged in that kind of conversation usually have the building's best interest at heart and they want, everybody wants for it to turn out to them. But we each bring our own ideas to the table and, and not always are they shared. So in dialogue and, and conversation, somebody wins in the end and that's a, a reason and intelligent solution most of the time. So we come in the old way and the old way is slow and it's hard and it's it's uh, boring, you know, to some. It's much faster to do things with modern technology and modern stuff, but it's important to have somebody who's interested in the other way, the old way, so that when we're gone, there's somebody who is interested in and, and has a database to, to draw from to gain instruction and education. And, and that's, uh, that's probably why I do what I do, because I appreciate the efforts of all of these people that have done these things that are now in need of somebody to care for in, in a way that honors them. And so my joy, really, is to learn all these different ways. But there are so many different ways of doing something. And it has to do with the people who, who did the work in the first place and why they did the work in the first place and what the work was that they were doing in the first place. And, and all of that time is now forgotten. There, there isn't any stories about it. There's just these relics of these places that instill or incite in certain people a curiosity to go and find out about them. And so far, there still is quite a bit to learn from what's available. And I think, thankfully, there's more and more information becoming more available with the digital digitization of photographs and documents and search engines and so forth that are um, tools to assist those that have an interest and a curiosity and that sort of thing. So my, uh, I guess my, my blessing so far has been that there is so far work that is out there to be done and can support the family and as long as, as that is true, then that's a good thing. What I fear is that I'm kind of a dinosaur <laughs> and that the extinction of the breed is is uh, on the wall, but I, I hope that that's not true and I hope that there's others that pick up the torch and, and carry on with, with this sort of thing. 